Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about the continuity equation for fluids. Our objectives are going to be to apply the continuity equation to moving fluids and explain the continuity equation in terms of conservation of mass flow rate. So let's start by talking about conservation of mass for fluids. When fluids move through a full pipe, the volume of fluid entering the pipe must equal the volume of fluid that's leaving the pipe. This is the law of conservation of mass for fluids. This holds true even if the diameter of the pipe changes. And what we're really saying is that the volume flow rate, the amount of volume going through the pipe per unit time, must remain constant throughout the entire pipe. Volume flow rate remains constant. So, volume flow rate. The volume of fluid moving through the pipe can be quantified in terms of that volume flow rate, where the volume flow rate is the area of the pipe times the velocity of the fluid at that point in the pipe. So area times velocity is going to give you the volume flow rate. That has to be constant throughout the pipe regardless of diameter. So over here on the left of our pipe, we have some area A1 and some velocity V1. That must be equal to A2 V2 over here on the right so that you maintain that constant volume flow rate. What that means then is because this is a, a larger area and this is a smaller area, if they must be equal, we must have faster flow over here where the pipe is narrower and slower flow over here where the pipe is wider. So taking a look at a sample problem in a tapered pipe, water runs through a water main of cross-sectional area 0.4 square meters with a velocity of 6 meters per second. Calculate the velocity of the water in the pipe when the pipe tapers down to a cross-sectional area of 0.3 meters squared. Well, we'll use our continuity equation for fluids that says A1 V1 equals A2 V2. And we want the velocity over here where it's 0.3 meters squared. Let's call that V2. So solving for V2, that must equal A1 over A2 V1 or 0.4 square meters over 0.3 square meters times V1, which was 6 meters per second, for a new velocity of 8 meters per second in the 0.3 square meter section of the pipe. Where the pipe gets narrower, the velocity speeds up. Let's take a look at a garden hose problem. Water enters a typical garden hose of diameter 1.6 centimeter with a velocity of 3 meters per second. Calculate the exit velocity of water from the garden hose when a nozzle of diameter half centimeter is attached to the end of the hose. And you've probably done this before where the water's coming out of the garden hose and you put your thumb over the end in order to shrink down the diameter of the end of the pipe to see that the water comes out more quickly, squirts a further distance. Well, to begin, let's figure out what our first area is. A1 will be pi times radius one squared or pi times 0 0.008 meters. 0 0.008 is half of 1.6 centimeters squared for an area of about 2.01 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. Area 2, pi r2 squared, will be pi times half of 0.5 centimeters is going to be 0 0.0025 meters squared for an area of about 1.96 times 10 to the minus 5 square meters. Now we can apply our continuity equation for fluids and say that A1V1 equals A2V2. Again, solving for V2, V2 must equal A1 over A2 times V1 or 2.01 times 10 to the minus 4 over 1.96 times 10 to the minus 5, all times our velocity 1, which was 3 meters per second, for a new velocity of 30.8 meters per second coming out the end of the pipe. Let's take a look at an oil pipeline problem. Oil flows through a pipe of radius r with speed v. Some distance down the pipeline, the pipe narrows to half its original radius. 
What is the speed of the oil in the narrow region of the pipe? Well, area one will be pi capital R squared. Area two then will be pi times capital R over two squared or pi over four R squared. Again, we'll apply the continuity equation for fluids to say that A1V1 equals A2V2. And solving for V2 again, V2 equals A1 over A2 times V1, or that's going to be pi capital R squared over pi over four capital R squared, all times whatever that V1 is. So we're going to get a velocity of four times our initial velocity when we cut down that radius to half of what it was before. Four times the velocity because of that squared relationship in the area. Let's try one more. Looking at the basis of the continuity equation, which statement belt below best describes the continuity equation for fluids? Energy is conserved in a closed system. Mass is conserved in a closed system. Linear momentum is conserved in a closed system. Angular momentum is conserved in a closed system, or charge is conserved in a closed system. Well, this should be fairly obvious, but really the continuity equation for fluids is all about conservation of mass. So mass is conserved as a close, in a closed system is our best answer. Hopefully that gets you a good start with the continuity equation for fluids. If you need more help or looking for assistance, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.